Okay, good question. The next technique is, uh, I have no better term for it except for the chicken wing. Um, and I'm sure that Alan Abel and, and others might have some different names for this, but I think chicken wing is the most memorable. And if I were doing both of them at the same time, you can see how this makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna ask you guys to all participate in this one. You're gonna use your strong hand for this, but use your weak hand, in my case, my left hand, and I set it up like this. And I'm gonna set it about four or five inches back from the break of my wrist, where my wrist breaks five inches back. And now the goal is this. Keep your hand out like this. You're not gonna bend here. You're gonna pivot like this. Wow, you guys are good. Yeah, try not to, try not to break your wrist and try not to move this hand too much. Try to pivot around this point. There's people doing pretty good jobs and the, the difference is you don't wanna go straight from the elbow, you wanna feel it all the way up through your shoulder. That's kind of the concept. Yeah, there's some good wings out there. Um, it's uh, spicy, yeah. So, um, so now, I'm gonna put the stick in my hand. And here's what it looks like, okay? There's a big range of motion right now. Notice the elbow splays out and it comes back into my body, okay? And now I'm gonna put this on the drum. It might sound a little ugly, What am I doing? I'm using large muscle groups to create a buzz. The buzz is a pretty tight buzz. Why can it be so tight? Well, one of the things that's gonna happen with this technique, uh, which is, I think, instrumental in making it such a good technique, is that I can play a lot faster speeds than when I was using just wrist. I ran out of speed and power. And so, as I work on this technique here, I'm gonna isolate both arms and then I'm gonna combine them. So I'm getting a pretty loud roll, keeping my sticks relatively low to the drum. That's one of the aspects of this technique, is that I'm getting my volume through speed and not height. What happens when we come from too high of height? A lot of times this happens where um, the conductor says, I want more roll. And so the drummer does this. Because you know they're assuming that's the way to get more volume. And it is, but it's incredibly beady. It doesn't work. So, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna my roll is gonna be created by speeding up this this roll speed. So So that's the key for me is that I can create my volume through going at about you know 160 to the quarter <coughs> note, which to some might seem extremely fast and, and unplayable, but as you get better at this technique here, it starts becoming uh, uh, possible. So as you're working on your chicken wing, on your plane ride home or in the passenger seat of your car on the way home, what you want to do once it start, starts getting comfortable is making this motion smaller. Because in the end, we're only going to use about this much, just about that much to do this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to combine these techniques. we got to figure out how are we going to do this wrist technique And how are we going to combine that with this arm technique? Well, I think we just have to practice the transition. And so the exercise I'm going to do uh, is, is basically just moving between them. Sixteenth notes to roll. You notice that um, my roll speed is the same, exactly the same as the sixteenth. That's the point of it. Okay? And then you just have to get good at going from wrist to arm. At different dynamics, the speed changes. So as I play softer, my roll speed changes. Okay, that's the idea there. Um, with my soft roll, one of the things I'm thinking about is an exercise in which I, again, isolate each stick. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out an eighth note. So this is a four, four bar. Let's make the next one a seven, eight bar. 
one two three four five six one uh, 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 right next is a three four what do you think's next if I take out an eighth note yeah two four three eight Roll. So that's the idea there. What am I doing? Uh, it's stuff that no matter what your technique is, you should do. And that is, listen to each hand. Listen to the amount of strokes that you're going for, the amount of bounces that you're going for. Do they sound the same? That's the key. Okay. We just gotta listen very carefully to the bounces that we're making. It may sound to you like my, my roll is very condensed, like I'm putting a lot of bounces in it. I am. I'm putting like six bounces in for the soft roll, which uh, to some might seem ex like extremely a lot, and you might also go, well, how do you know it's six? The answer is I have no idea. But I have a feeling, I have a feeling that it might be. Here's two. Here's three. Here's four. You can hear the difference so far, right? Here's five. Here's six. I don't know. <laughs> I can't be sure, but yeah, that's, that's the idea. Okay? And so another thing we want to do is we want to be able to go in between uh, doubles, you know, two bounces to six bounces. Okay? So there are my soft doubles, and I'm going to increase this into my six bounces and come out of it. You'll notice that I'm using that same chicken wing technique even for the soft plank. So I'm not using my wrist for some of my soft plank. I'm going to talk about that some more later. So now I want to, um, did you have a question? Yeah. Most people in the percussion world have the fulcrum on the first joint. And if you do that, you have to use your second finger to put pressure down to get bounces. Right. You're holding second knuckle. I'm guessing that you're actually getting your squeeze from the tip of this finger. Yeah, that's a good. That's you a really good that. question. Yeah, I've got a kind of a weird grip, um, but <laughs> it, it's kind of like whatever works. But the, the deal is that it is like that. I have sort of a three-pronged fulcrum. I know I was taught that it should be. Your thumb and, and first finger, index finger, should be opposite each other on the stick. I like that. I just play better when I grip it a little bit more in, in my hand, and I'm gripping it with this part of the index finger and this side of the index finger and my thumb, and you're right. I am putting a little pinch on from underneath the stick. Um, I wouldn't get too bogged down on that because I've seen other players who play like this with lots of space in here, and they make it work just fine. So. You know, I, I generally shy away from, you know, having students change their grip completely to match mine because I think we're all, you know, like with, with any sport or any activity, we're going to change. Our grip is, is specific to us. Uh, if we're in the right ballpark on it, I think it's going to work. But you're right. It's a, I'm gripping it with my index finger down here underneath this thing. Okay.